Let's solve some GCSC electricity physics questions. These questions are from OCR and I've linked them in the description below. However, they're applicable to all exam boards, including AQA, Edexcel, etc. as the physics is the same. Okay, well, let's have a look at this one. What is the current at point P in the circuit? We're tempted to do some calculations because we have uh, the resistance. We also have the current and the voltage. However, this is a series circuit, meaning that the current does not change throughout the circuit. Therefore, at P, the current will be the same, which is going to be 0.5 amps. Therefore, the correct answer is A. Okay, next one. A student builds a circuit to investigate the resistance of component X, and we have the circuit over here. What is the name of this component? Well, if we have an arrow pointing this way, this is just a variable resistor, so we can write this down. This is a variable resistor. Why is this component needed in the circuit? The clue is kind of in the name. It changes or it varies the resistance in the circuit. So let's just, just say that it can change the resistance well my handwriting is not good but change the resistance in the circuit okay the student uses the circuit to take current potential difference readings and then they obtain this graph looking at the graph what is the component x in the circuit well anytime the graph kind of like starts like this and then tailors off and uh, the same is for negative voltages. This shape is indicative of a light bulb or a filament lamp. So we can just say a filament lamp. Okay, next part, the resistance of the component varies as the potential difference changes. Describe how the graph shows this and explain why this happens. Okay, we need to do two things. So first of all, we need to describe and then we also need to explain why this happens. Let's do the first bit, which is the describing. Well, we know that the resistance changes because as the current is increasing, the rate of increase actually decreases. And uh, if we can imagine a slope or the gradient of this, uh, of this line, let's write it again, uh, the gradient will be decreasing. So here it's quite steep, whereas here it's not so steep and here it's pretty much flat. Okay, well, let's just write this down and we can say that the gradient of the graph decreases as PD increases. So this actually means that the resistance increases. The reason why we know that resistance increases is in a way, um, the graph is kind of moving away from the current axis, meaning that it's harder to draw higher and higher currents into the filament lamp. Now I'll explain why this happens. The reason for that is because the temperature of the component increases. So we can say over here that as PD increases, the temperature increases. And these statements would actually give us three marks. So one will go for this, another one will go for this, and another one will go for this. Okay, part C, component X has a resistance of 16 ohms and a current of 0.25 amp flows. Calculate the potential difference across this component, and we're given the equation for it. So potential difference is just current time resistance. Our current is 0.25, and we need to multiply that by the resistance, which is 16 ohms, and this is going to give us 4 volts. Part 2, calculate the power of the component when a current of 0.25 amp flows. Okay, well, power is simply equal to current times voltage, and our current was 0 0.25, 0 0.25, our voltage is 4, giving us an answer of just 1 watt. 
Okay, next question, which of the above shows the characteristic IV graph for a diode? Now with a diode, we actually have no potential difference until we reach the threshold voltage. Then the voltage increases like this. The correct answer is B. Next one, we have a circuit diagram. We have 10 amps going this way, two and a half amps is going this way so this means that right over here the the 10 amps would have split into two anytime you see a junction this means the current can go this way or this way if two and a half amps go this way then we must have seven and a half amps remaining because they are gonna add up to 10 so seven and a half is the answer which is c therefore the correct answer is c Okay, next one, a student investigates the characteristics of an LED and we have this circuit across here. What we need to do is identify two errors that have been made. Now, first of all, with the LED, very common mistake is that it's connected the wrong way around. It should be connected positive to negative. If it's connected positive to negative, the pointy bit will be pointing towards this smaller terminal, but here it's actually pointing towards the positive terminal, so it's connected the other way. Uh, it should be connected the other way around with the pointy bit connected sort of this way across here. So this is how it should be done. Okay, well, let's identify the other error. Should we just write the first error so we can say that the LED is connected the wrong way. Negative to positive and then the other error we can see if we're trying to investigate the voltage across uh, the LED and we have a variable resistor here then well this voltmeter should be connected across the LED not across the power supply because otherwise this will just give us the voltage across the power supply so we can say that the voltmeter should be across the LED. Next one, what is the purpose of this component in the circuit? So this is a variable resistor and obviously it changes the or it varies the resistance. The student then connects the circuit correctly. He measures the current for the LED as 0.03 and the potential difference across it is 3 volts. Calculate the resistance of the LED. So potential difference is equal to current times resistance. You can write this as V is equal to IR. Rearranging for the resistance that will be equal to the potential difference divided by the current. Our potential difference is 3 volts and then we need to divide that by the current which is equal to 0.03 which is just going to give us 100 ohms. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. Calculate the charge which flows when this LED operates for two and a half minutes. Our equation for charge is that it's equal to current multiplied by the time in seconds if the current is in amps so mathematically we'll write this as q is equal to i t now let's see whether we can find the current uh, we'll probably given the current yet yeah, 0.03 so this will be 0.03 multiply by 2.5 minutes and each of them has 60 seconds which is just going to give us 4.5 coulombs of charge. Okay, part three, the last part of this question, calculate the energy transferred when this LED operates for two and a half minutes. And we're even, we're even given the equation that energy transferred is equal to 
charge times potential difference. Okay, well, in this case, our charge is 4.5 that we found in the previous question. We always tend to use data that we've collected from the previous question, a lot of GCSE questions, and then we need to multiply that by our potential difference, which we're given somewhere across here is just equal to 3 giving us a grand total of 13.5 joules. Okay, let's do one more. A student builds two electrical circuits. Each circuit uses, uses identical cells and identical fixed resistors. Explain why circuit A has a lower total resistance. So in here, they are connected in parallel, meaning that the overall resistance is half the resistance. So we can say that for circuit A, the resistors are connected in parallel total resistance is half of the resistor value whereas in circuit B they are in series So the total resistance is double. Is doubled. Okay, another student investigates the resistance of a filament lamp. Explain why the resistance of the filament lamp increases when the current increases. So there are two important points to remember, and that is that as current increases, the temperature increases. So the temperature increases. Now, because the temperature increases, there's actually more collisions between the conducting electrons and the ions, and that actually leads to the increase of the resistance. So we can say that there are more collisions between electrons and ions. Okay, part two, design a circuit diagram which could be used to, which could be used to investigate how the resistance of a filament lamp changes with current. Okay, and uh, we can use all the symbols below. Now, just a little note that I'm about to draw this diagram, but I don't have a digital ruler um, on the tablet that I'm using. But uh, yeah, in the real exam, if you can use a ruler, that would be awesome. And there is my circuit. So uh, I've got the ammeter in series, and then I'm going to vary the resistance with a variable resistor. The only thing we have missing is the voltmeter, so let's just add that in. Remember, a voltmeter always goes in parallel, whereas the ammeter is in series. So that's quite a typical circuit. If the question was about an LED, I'll put an LED here or any other. Um, any other component we want to look at. Okay, last part of this question, describe how the student would use the circuit to investigate how the resistance of a filament lamp changes with current. And what we need to do is, first of all, vary the resistance of the variable resistor. This will actually change the PD and the current in the circuit. I'm going to measure multiple readings of the PD and the current. I would even add that they always need to be at least aiming for a lot more and then finally we're going to plot a graph of the current against the potential difference okay guys well hopefully this video was very useful you need to have a look at this video right over here uh, in which I covered the entirety of GCSE electricity and circuits and um, this will only happen in around 20 minutes so click over here